All right, let's jump into another voicemail. Hey, Ballers. Steven from New Jersey. You guys talk a lot of strategy on startup dynasty leagues, but how do you change from a redraft strategy on a startup keeper league? Rules are keeping three players, and next year you keep them two rounds ahead of where you drafted them the previous year, and no holding on to waiver players. Thanks. Bye. Oh, I love that last part. Oh, but no, no holding on to waivers? I love that. That's that's my preferred method for keeper leagues. Waiver players, they're great. You don't get them. My advice for the and I have, I have, we've played in leagues like this all the time. I mean, this is this is kind of bread and butter type of league for us. Three keepers. I think one of the mistakes people can make when they go into a league like this is believing that those three keeper spots need to dictate so much of what you do during the season because they don't. Such a common mistake. Because they don't. There will all. I mean. If you are managing your roster the right way, you cannot live in this frame of mind where, oh my gosh, I just got to have, I got to keep, I got to figure out my three keepers and just keep them on lockdown. Yeah, I got to trade my team. I, my team gets a little worse, but my keeper situation is set up. Oh, I got to draft this guy who's younger yeah. because I'll be able to keep him for more years into the future. If you're only keeping three or four guys, you're going to change what you think every yeah. single yeah. year. And guess what you do when you do that? You don't put yourself in the position to be fluid with what reality is. Because if you draft a guy that's a little bit younger for the purpose of being a keeper, and that player underperforms. Guess what you're going to do? Are you going to keep him? Yeah, you probably are, You're probably going to keep him, or are you going to try to sell him on what you bought him for, which is not going to work. So, so basically, keeper leagues, you use the advice of redraft. Yes, Don't almost entirely. Unless you're keeping seven guys or more then it's then it shifts to me to be more like a dynasty where okay age is going to matter and and seven keeper leagues are very very if rare. you're in a three keeper the the one place that it impacts it slightly for me is around the trade deadline just giving your roster a glance and knowing that you're in a flexible position with the keepers right yeah, yeah. if you have like we have leagues where you can you're restricted on what positions you can keep you can't just keep three running backs so if you're in a league that has some restrictions you know, you can only keep one at each position. At least make sure you have flexibility there. But that's at the trade deadline. You can make those adjustments. And, um, you know, you're just going to be surprised I honestly by the time the year's over what players are good that you thought weren't going to be good and that type of thing. If you're in a keeper league, this little last couple minutes will, will help you beat the other people in your league because it is <laughs> such a common it's mistake. True. Oh, hey, wasn't expecting you. Thanks for watching the video. You should check out the long form, the hour. Check it out. Subscribe to the Fantasy Footballers channel.